All right, guys, good morning. Just ran an update here for Linux Mint and OBS Studio, so I hope this works well. I did not test it. Let me look at the, at the screen, split screen here, and uh, yeah, it looks like it's running. So welcome for this Friday morning. If you haven't already subscribed, uh, please do and hit the notification bell because I do these streams at very uh, different times. I'm trying to do these more in the morning so people overseas in different time zones can stop in and say hello. I know that many of you, if not a majority of you, never get a chance to stop in the chat. So thank you if you stop by now or later. Always appreciate it. Uh, one of the reasons, let me go to the next topic before we talk about Chrome OS. I need to do something with the Patreon page. This is where I post the uh, podcast version of these live video shows, the shortened version. Uh, I had a request to put up a Patreon page. Well, it would have been pre-pandemic. Um, geez, yeah, 2019, maybe even before. It was working out well, but then the pandemic hit and people dropped off one by one for various reasons. I have one person left on the Patreon page. Thank you. You know who you are because you're very special. And he is a very special person from out uh, in Wyoming, I believe. Um, fantastic supporter of the channel. Thank you so much. And we always catch up when we can on the private chats, usually Friday evenings. Those of you who support the channel through Patreon or PayPal, you're automatically invited to a private chat if you so choose to be invited. And you can uh, remain anonymous if you want to so thank you so for this here for the patreon page let me know if you got if you guys have any suggestions this is where i post again the audio podcast and some other things special things uh sometimes you can join the tos today toss today patreon for as little as a dollar a month there's more information on the total os patreon and i'll just leave it at that if, if you have any suggestions I am welcome to suggestions and other things. So thank you. All right. Uh, let's see. Looks like the stream. Looks like we're in the green here. So very good. Very good. For those of you who are curious, I am running. I'm doing this live show on a fossil of a machine that still runs. It's a Lenovo that originally had Windows 7. Yes, it still runs. Dual booting with Linux Mint and lightweight fairly lightweight Windows 11. Yes, you can install Windows 11 on an outdated machine, tweak it to run, uh, well, actually faster than some Linux-based systems, including Ubuntu. And Windows 11, to me, feels faster than Ubuntu. We've talked about the brief history of Ubuntu, why I dumped Ubuntu and the dummy output and all that. It just... Yeah, uh, with all that's been happening with Ubuntu, I finally crossed the threshold where this Windows user who has had patience with Linux over the years finally said, I've had enough, no more for Ubuntu. Now next year when they switch to the immutable desktop like da -da -da -da, Chromebooks, surprise, I may go back to Ubuntu but not today. Today I use Windows 11, Windows 10. Linux Mint is my go-to Linux right now. Of course, I use Chromebooks, the laptop sometimes. I don't use laptops that much for live streaming or doing videos. I still prefer desktop, but I'm actually doing this on a 50-inch TV. So very, very convenient. All right, let me get another cup of coffee here. One moment. All right, so as I said, I do these live streams at different times. Um, I don't know when is the perfect time to do a live stream for people overseas. Uh, yeah, when I say overseas, Italy, you know, Germany, France, and all that. So I'll probably miss most of you 
Um, if you have any suggestions on when to do live streams, uh, let me know in the comments below or shoot me an email. If I see a pattern of days and times, my time, local time, which would be New York time or Eastern Standard Time, let me know and maybe we can try scheduling a live stream when I can. If I see a pattern of suggestions for a morning, my morning live stream. So for example, if you're in Italy and it's 8 a.m. here or 9 a.m. here would be what 3 p.m. there as an example. Okay. All right. Let's go. And now these these um these podcasts, sometimes I'll, I'll let you in on a little secret. Sometimes I'll, I'll record multiple ones in the morning back to back and do the editing later. It's just easier for me that way. That way I'll have uh, two ready to go for the next time I want to upload something. So again, if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing. Hit the notification bell. That way you'll know when I post something, either a standard video or going live. All right, so I need to bring up VLC here. Give me a second. All right, so let's take a listen to what I recorded. This was recorded a few mornings ago. Uh, on the brief history of uh, Chromebooks and Chrome OS, again, the key word now is immutable. Um, yeah, so let's see what I said the other morning. I'm sitting here early morning updating this uh, Chromebook of mine. I'm still amazed by the speed of these things. These laptops basically open the lid, log in, just check for updates. The whole process from start to finish takes maybe a minute, maybe two minutes. Yes, I do have to reboot. No big deal. I think I'll wait on that. But these machines have come a long way. Anyway, hello and welcome back to this Total OS podcast. Uh, some of my friends call me Toss. My real name is Carmine. Or as the UPS driver once said, package for Carmini. Really? Carmini? You know, my name is spelled C-A-R-M-I-N-E. <laughs> I should have said, uh, thank you for the package, Chris, instead of Chris. I, I don't know what his real name was, but uh, Carmini. That is definitely a language bug. <laughs> Welcome back. It's great to have you here for this brief history of Chromebooks for this podcast. The history of the Chromebook. Well, this is worth mentioning because you may have heard that in technology circles in the Linux community now, the buzzword is immutable. Uh, I feel like yawning, <sighs> you know, because, sorry, because Chromebook has, Chromebooks have an immutable system called Chrome OS. They've been doing this for years and they have perfected this system, it would appear. Anyway, the history of the Chromebook, um, this is quite amazing. The, the first Chromebook was released, I think it was back in 2011. I forget which companies, I, th I think it may, it may have been um, Samsung or Acer uh, that uh, brought the first Chromebooks to market. So these are essentially uh, laptops or tablets. I think there may be a few desktops around, I'm not sure. Uh, running the Linux-based Chrome OS operating system, relying uh, primarily on web applications course with your browser in this case the Chrome browser although later on uh, I think it was maybe five years later or so uh, 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 Chromebooks integrated uh, the ability to run Android apps like what you have on your Android phone to run Android uh, application and then I think later on uh, Linux applications using the Linux uh, developmental mode in at least some of these Chromebooks where you can download, uh, I believe the, I believe it's Debian uh, applications, and you can download other apps on your, just like you would on your Android phone, such as Firefox and so on. Uh, the first Chromebooks, again, came out in the summer of 2011, I believe. Yep, the first time I looked at a Chromebook, I was not impressed. Uh, of course, they were brand new. Of 
course, back then, you know, it was primarily Windows and Mac machines. I had used, uh, I was using Ubuntu uh, back then. I think it was Ubuntu, Linux, Mint, and Zorin I was messing with back then. Uh, Chromebooks did outsell Apple Macs uh, starting, well, during the pandemic period. Uh, and this was due primarily uh, for educational use, or though if, if you're into running primarily stuff on the web, listening to me, music, or streaming, then Chromebooks are for you. So that would have been in 2011. Uh, a few years after that, uh, Google began shipping the um, uh, Google Pixel, a higher-end spec machine with the, and with the higher-end retail price. Uh, I think I, I don't think Google makes the Pixel uh, anymore, or there's been talk of bringing it back. I'm not sure. the The big thing for me with with the Chromebook as a Windows user is the uh, well, they do more than one thing. They can run obviously Chrome OS. You can run Android apps, or you can run what I call standard uh, Linux apps from the uh, Debian repository it should be noted that a lot of systems including Ubuntu are based off of Debian uh, it would be uh, if, 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 if you wanted to try standard Debian check out the Debian stable branch by the way if you wanted to be more adventurous so let's see yeah back in uh, so this started in 2011 and uh, some years after that uh, Google announced compatibility Linux compatibility, running the, uh, uh, the running Crostini, I believe, a virtual machine codenamed Crostini. Sounds like uh, something I put in my pasta. <laughs> so here we are today. The key word again is immutable. Chromebooks continue to sell. Uh, if you're looking for a machine that Look, you're not into testing or anything. You just want to log in. What, what what I would call click and go. You log in. You click. Get to the web. Check your email. Whatever. Skype. Whatever you do. Google Meet. Google Meet is great, by the way, if you want to talk one on one or with friends. You know, you just want to get online, listen to me or some other person on the web. Maybe play music, stream music. Of course, these machines now can do more. Uh, but if that's pretty much all you want to do, these are for you. So there are many advantages uh, to a Chromebook. Let me get another sip of coffee here. So what are the uh, advantages of a Chromebook? Well, there's, there, there's quite a few and by the way, these are also mentioned on the Ubuntu uh, blog since they're going to be um, next year. You'll be able to download an immutable version of uh, Ubuntu. All right, so first of all, what is Chrome OS? Well, Chrome OS is an operating system, a Linux-based operating system that is, well, super fast, simple, and secure. It is the operating system that powers every Chromebook. Security is one of the key features of a Chromebook with built-in virus protection and multiple layers of security, including sandboxing. So what Chrome OS does, it keeps different software on your Chromebook separate with sandboxing. So if one part gets infected, the rest is designed to stay safe. There's something called verified boot. Every time your Chromebook starts up, there is a process called verified boot. It's basically a quick security checkup uh, to make sure that there is no malware on your Chromebook. All right, so we have a security chip. Every Chromebook includes a built-in security chip. We have built-in virus protection. The built-in virus uh, pr protection uh, protects your Chromebook from malware automatically. No need to install third-party uh, security software. Chromebooks, as I said, they're super fast. You can boot up in seconds. Automatic updates, the latest software without being interrupted. So other features are the Google Assistant, uh, Smart Lock. Smart, Clot, Smart Lock uses your Android phone. 
the wireless key to unlock your Chromebook automatically. There are different versions of Chromebooks, different price points. They generally start at about $200. I think you can go all the way up to uh, uh, $1,000 depending on what you're looking for, storage capability and speed. By the way, another advantage of the Chromebooks is long battery life, uh, 10 to 12 hours depending on the, on the device. If, um, if your Chromebook has a lighted keyboard, uh, I don't think you can get the 10 to 12 hours, obviously, since it's, you know, it's using more battery uh, juice for the lighted keyboard, which looks cool. But generally speaking, up to 10 to 12 hours on a single charge. I enjoy using them when I do, although I, although I have to be honest, I don't use my laptop. I have a, a Chromebook and a Windows laptop. I don't use laptops that much anymore. It's either going to be my desktop or my phone, usually. And uh, nothing against the Chromebook uh, in laptop format, but uh, if, if you're looking for something portable, reliable, zero malware, and I haven't seen any bugs, somebody was... Uh, saying, oh, come on, Toss, there has to be bugs. They're, well, if there are, they are not affecting me. And that's all that matters. No bugs, at least not that I can see. No malware, no ransomware. I've never heard of a Chromebook getting ransomware. Have you? I'm sure it's possible, but not today. That's it. That's it for this one. Check out the Chromebook if you haven't already. Marvelous pieces of modern technology. Chromebooks, check them out. Take care. I forgot to mention that this afternoon I'll be heading out to uh, Toronto to help a lady transition from Windows to her first Chromebook. Now when I say Toronto, I mean Toronto, Ohio. Not Toronto, Canada. Just a little bit too much of a drive. Yeah, I got my Learjet in the garage. It's having its engines replaced in a tune-up. <laughs> I wish. So I'll let you guys know how that. I'll let you guys know how that goes. Uh, I think she's gonna be okay. Uh, the Chromebook was bought to uh, bought by her son last Christmas. And I think she she said she forgot all about it. I think she's afraid of learning something new and I told her look it the Chromebook is gonna run faster it's going to be easier to use it's gonna be a lot less maintenance than Windows at least it should be unless of course there's something physically wrong with the laptop I think it's a Lenovo I don't know which model I know it's not a two-in-one you know it's a combination touchscreen tablet keyboard uh, but I think she's gonna be okay but when you're when you're dealing with um, you know uh, friends clients who are retired um, she's retired nurse or banker or something and they're not into all this all this technology can be a bit overwhelming uh, yeah you need to go slow so uh, I'll probably be there at least two or three hours being patient. She's very sweet. She'll have some candy there, cookies or something to drink. Very sweet lady. And um, again, not too far from here, so I don't mind helping her out. Yeah, transitioning from Windows to a Chromebook for someone who is retired that is not into technology whatsoever. Um, she's too shy to be put on camera, but... I'll give you guys an update on that and let you know how that goes. But I think she's going to be okay. I'm, I'm pretty patient, a good listener, at least I think I am. So, yeah, someone transitioning from um, Windows 11 to a Chromebook. Oh, man, there are so many videos on YouTube saying why would you want to use Chromebooks or Chrome OS? It's just, it's the worst operating system. I, mean, uh, I can't say what I want to say because this is a family channel. But you guys can guess what a New Yorker would want to say. <laughs> when I see complete 
bogus stuff like this. And maybe one of these days I'll do something from my Chromebook and just show you just how easier it is to use than Windows or any Linux out there, period. Anyway, um, I'm out of coffee, but let me jump into the into the chat and see if anybody joined in again. If I missed anyone, I apologize for that. Once again, if you have suggestions for when to do the live streams, give me a day, multiple days, times, and I'll see what I can do since I have the time right now. Give me a minute here. Let me jump into the chat and see who is here. All right, looks like Spin Vikings in the house. Hello, Spin. Hello, Razor. Razor says anything but Windows 11. Well, Razor, I have to tell you that uh, Windows 11 is the best Windows yet. It blows away at least some Linux based systems like <coughs> Ubuntu. It's faster than Ubuntu. Uh, I enjoy it more than using Ubuntu. I no longer use Ubuntu. So I guess I guess it depends what you're looking for, um, Razor. But yeah, Windows 11 I was able to install on a on a machine. I mentioned this earlier on a computer that had Windows 7. So I would consider Windows 11 a fairly lightweight system for older machines. If you somehow, if you know how to tweak it to run well on an older machine. So yeah. It's 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 not accurate to say that uh, you want to choose Linux over Windows 11 because Linux, some forms of Linux are designed to run on outdated machines. That's true, but so is Windows 11 if you know how to tweak it. Again, this is from, I actually installed Windows 11 on two machines. One is a gateway, uh, I dual boot that, and the other one is a Lenovo that had Windows 7. Now for this live show, I'm doing I'm um, live streaming from Linux. Smith Mate. By the way, doing podcasts, podcasting and Keurig instant coffee machines are the best marriage, the best combination. I should have made me a little <laughs> a cheese sandwich, but I guess that would be rude to talk and, you know, chew. Anyway, yeah, Windows 10 can be tweaked to use a quarter of the RAM, had it on the laptop, but an update killed it as usual. Okay. Yeah, I, I tweaked Windows 11. I, you know, probably the updates made some changes to it, but I didn't notice any slowness uh, with some of the tweaks that I did on this older... Uh, Lenovo, I think it's an H405, if you guys want to look it up. Um, yeah, it look, it still runs. It, it, it plays with Linux beautifully. Uh, so I, um, I kept it. It just works. Spin says you've had a bad experience with Windows 11. What exactly happened? Um, yeah, because of my two computers, Windows 11 is perfectly fine. Uh, it was kind of disappointing that Windows 11 runs so good because I like to joke and make fun of systems, but I can't do it with Windows 11. So, yeah. Now, it should be noted that Microsoft officially does not recommend installing Windows 11 on unsupported machines, even though they had a, a hack on their blog on how to do it. Um, but for those of you who want to do it, it is possible. So Razor says you run with unactivated and no MS account. Ah, okay. Yeah, I just did it the way you normally would, activated an account. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, you know, it runs good. It just <laughs> works the way it should, so... I think somebody wrote a blogger wrote a, Windows 11 is a 
want a reason not to run Linux anymore or something like that. I won't go that far. But you, you should at least try it. Yeah, if, if you've had bad luck with Linux or just have no patience, then, you know, Windows or, or, or a Chromebook might be uh, something for you. I enjoy my Chromebooks when I use them. I got word this morning that uh, Minecraft is officially coming to the Chromebooks. Google is uh, making sure that at least some Chromebooks, higher-end Chromebooks, or can do gaming. So if you're into Minecraft and gaming, well, now you can do, uh, officially you can do Minecraft on a Chromebook. Remember a few years ago, Linus Torvalds did a did an interview, and uh, he was frustrated with the slow adoption of Linux on the desktop for the masses. But he liked Chromebooks because there was there's no fragmentation, a global Linux standard. Now, when the father of Linux says that, there you go. End of story, right? Spin, I don't use uh, extra antivirus in Windows. I use the built-in, uh, what, what is it, Windows Defender, whatever it's called. It's fine. I use Malwarebytes. Uh, that's it. Prime OS, not familiar with Prime OS, yeah. I stopped once. I have to tell you that uh, I stopped uh, distro hopping. Uh, I've settled pretty much for the masses, okay? For both Windows and non-Windows users. For the masses, these are pretty much your solid choices that have proven themselves over the years, over and over. And that would be now when, now, now, when I say proven with very little drama, very little uh, controversy, whatever you want to des describe as a, a system for the masses. Okay, now, ultimately, it's your choice. I totally get it. So, my number one choice for the masses, for Windows users, is Chrome OS Flex or a Chromebook. Why? Zero maintenance. I mean zero. Either it works or it doesn't work. Okay, that is your immutable system. Okay, now it, it may not be for everyone, but if you don't if you don't want to deal with bugs, maintenance, using the terminal, that should be your number one choice. It's been out since 2011, and the Chromebooks have proven themselves. So that should be your number one choice to try Linux. If you tried Linux or tried Chrome OS Flex, then from there you may want to migrate to buying a Chromebook. Okay, So Chrome OS Flex should be your number one choice if you are new to all this and you don't want to mess with you know, Ubuntu's dummy output for the audio. So Chrome OS Flex, from there you can go to Linux Mint, okay, Zorn, or Pop OS, Ubuntu Mate, for the masses, for 1.3 billion Windows users out there. Uh, that's it. I mean, I don't know what else to say after running Linux since 2006. That is my no bullshit, or sorry, family channel. That is my no BS way to explain it to all of you to eliminate the uh, confusion. Because it can be, there are approximately last year, 600 Linux base distributions when you count all the forks. <laughs> well, no wonder a Windows user is going to say, screw this. This is too confusing. I don't blame them. Choice is good, but sometimes too much choice, you know, can be confusing. I need to get a, a glass of water. I'll be right back. Don't go away.
<clears throat> All right. Uh, what time is it? Okay. I'll stick around a little bit longer before I start my day. This has been horrible weather. I mean, horrible as in can't use the pool. Too cold at night. Nice during the day. But yeah, 40 at night is, 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 ugh. yeah, not good. But Windows will blame the end user every time. Uh, Spin Viking says, "I th actually I think it's it's more the Linux bloggers that will blame the end user uh, for not being more patient or searching the web. I'm not sure about Windows blaming. Uh, just a personal observation." All right, for those of you who watch this late, once again, if you have any suggestions for the Toss Today Patreon page, let me know. Again, during the pandemic and post-pandemic, I had people drop off of the, of, of the Patreon thing. Uh, I didn't keep up with it as much as I should have, so part of it is my fault. I have one person left on it still. Thank you. And this is where I'll, I'll post some exclusive stuff in the audio versions of these live shows. So... Let me know what you think about all this, because uh, I may do something else. I had something funny pop on yesterday. I was using Windows 11, the Microsoft Edge browser, searching the news, and a fake notification came on with a recording warning, your computer has been locked. You have a virus. Do not attempt to restart the computer. Of course I did. It never ends, does it? Spin, if you're getting malware every time on Windows, there is something else going on. Uh, yeah, uh, I haven't, I, I, I never get it. Uh, but yeah, something's going on, Spin, that's not normal on your Windows 11 because Windows security, once again, I don't use anything extra to protect the system, but the built-in antivirus and maybe malware bytes. Sometimes I'll use super anti-spyware. Uh, so something's going on with your system, Spin. Yeah. Yeah, Razor mentioned uh, you block Origin to block the ads. But don't block them on my channel. <laughs> it does help. Okay, fine. If you want to block ads on my channel, fine. Ah, <laughs> uh, you've downloaded executable files with the malware hidden on it. Really? I've man, it's been a long, long time since that's happened to me. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. What did I download last? Sometimes there'll be a studio I'll download in Windows 
executable malware bytes executable i mean I'm, i mean i'm going to their official websites not having a problem uh i really don't know spin without me really physically being there i don't know but i don't have a problem with malware of course with chromebooks there is no malware multiple shields on the Chromebooks, which makes it about as 100% secure as possible. Uh, you upload the X, exe to virus total to do an online scan if you're not sure. Yep, good choice. All right, I'll stick around just a few more minutes. If there's anybody new who is watching and wants to say hello as a question, please do. I love to see people chime in from other parts of the world who don't normally have a chance to say hello. So what do you guys think about this, about all this immutable OS talk in the Linux world? It almost makes me want to yawn because, again, it's not new. Chromebooks have had this for years, but I guess if you got a copy, copy from the best, right? <laughs> Eraser, if if you like to customize, like you say, constantly changing things in the distribution, then Immutable is not uh, for someone like yourself. And that's a choice. That's perfectly fine. I think the idea behind Immutable is stability, reliability, not having things break down, not having, you know, things that happened to me with Ubuntu where I got no sound and it, it says dummy output in the audio driver. It's immutable systems are designed for people who don't want to take a bottle of Tylenol or aspirin to fix something in a Linux-based system. But that is correct. If you if you if you're into tweaking and all that stuff, then it's not for you. Uh, I don't tweak anymore or customize anymore. I just want to install it. I like click and go. Click and go. Just right. Just kind of like in my car. Just start my car. Go. I don't want to do this, clean that, you know, do a tune-up, change this, change everything. I just want to go. So, yeah. So next year with Ubuntu, giving you a choice with an immutable system, I'm kind of curious. Yeah. Uh, will it be faster, slower, more reliable? I'll probably try it.
yeah, internet cafes. Yeah. Um, we don't f f officially have internet cafes here where I live. Um, I mean, there's places where they offer free Wi-Fi, but you got to be careful. Like the, you know, there's a McDonald's here in Brooklyn Bagel. Um, I don't usually connect to these public Wi-Fi's. All right, I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to upload the uh, short audio podcast version of this on the on the Patreon page. For those of you who like to listen to the shortened version of this and download it. And that's it for this morning. Sorry I missed you if you watched this on the replay. And I'll catch you on the next one. So, hey, if, if you have a Chromebook or Chrome OS Flex, let me know if you're having a good time with it. I am a joy to use. All right, be safe out there. Watch out for that malware spin. <laughs> Thanks, Razor, for stopping in, and I'll, I'll catch everyone next time. Take care.